Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and tough to follow a musical act. Oh, my God. Um, but I'm very delighted to be here with you. Um, as he said, I'm, family, um, I'm Kathy Dykstra from Family Scholar House. Our mission is to end the cycle of poverty by giving single parent students the support they need to earn a four year college degree. Our experience has been that our families have many barriers to getting their education, to realizing their educational goals. So they don't start out with just one, there's a series of them and our, our role is to help them get all the way to the goal line. As my uh, friend and uh, partner at Georgetown College, Dr. Crouch has said, there are no points for getting to the 50 yard line and he's right. Uh, so we have to get families all the way through. So I want you to use your imagination for a moment. I want you to imagine that you're a single parent, 25 to 30, somewhere in that age range. You have two children. You have one that's school age, one that's still in daycare. Um, you have a job, best job you've had in a while. You're really pleased to still have that job. You're making about $8 an hour. But the kids have been sick, and so you've missed a lot of work. They haven't fired you yet, but you know that could happen. You are benefiting from, you've applied for every social service uh, opportunity that you have. You've applied for food stamps. You're getting some help from food stamps. Um, you don't have a permanent home. This week you're living with your mom. Next week you may be staying with your sister. You have a friend who has a couch who'll take you and the kids in when you have to have a place to stay. You have to move around a lot because all of your family would be in trouble for violating their own lease agreements if you stayed there. So you can't get caught. So the kids don't really know that you're homeless. They just think you move around a lot. And you've tried to keep it that way because there's some shame associated with not having a place to call home. And you don't want them to carry that burden. Um, you want better for them. You want better for your children, even more so than you want better for yourself. You remember being in high school and your guidance counselor, counselor talking about the port, importance of education. And at the time you thought, I don't need that post-secondary education. I don't need that. I'm fine on my own. But now you wish that you'd paid more attention and you'd give anything to have a do-over, to be able to focus a little more in high school and get the kind of education that would have allowed you to move directly into college. You did some courses in community college, but it, it really just didn't work out because you couldn't work enough, go to school and study and take care of the kids, and you just couldn't do it all. And right now you're wondering if you could even get back into college, how would you pay for it? Well, what would you do? How would you work? How would you pull it all together? And so the dreams of being a nurse or a teacher or um, a social worker or going to law school aren't just on the back burner. They're off the stove. And that's the world that most of our families live in. And then someone introduces them to Family Scholar House, the community of support that is Family Scholar House. It is not just me, and it is not just buildings. Um, we do create a campus environment that includes supportive housing and all of the supports that families need. So everything from having academic advisors on site, peer support, case management, um, clothing, food, um, TARC passes, all of those things, uh, comprehensive services for children and adults, but it's also your neighbors. It's the people next door who have the same goals that you have, who are focused on the same things that you're focused on, who care about education and care about their children and care about their children's education. And so in that environment, you're not the odd man out. You're not the one person who wants to go to college. You're one of the many that are in college. All of our participants are required to be full-time college students. All are single parents, so all have physical custody of a child or children. All participate in our programming by meeting with an academic advisor twice a month, a case manager twice a month, come into peer support. And I say have to, and you'll hear from every participant that you ever speak with, get to. The opportunity to have what feels essentially like life coaching and a family of support and neighbors that care about them and goal setting and opportunities to realize their goals are very meaningful. We know that we've done our job when a family graduates, and by that I mean not just the adult that we've been serving, but when their children 
go on to college. To date, our participants have earned 58 college degrees. We've sent 12 children on to college on full or partial scholarships. 21 more adults will graduate this May. Seven more children will graduate from high school. Six are going on to college on full or partial scholarships. One is already signed up and will be in the Marines. These are successes for our families, 73% of which are first-generation college students. 40% are the first in their families to graduate from high school. But the most important thing of this for all of you is that a rising tide lifts all boats. When our families do better, our community does better. These are the employees that businesses move here to hire. These are the employees that not only work and pay taxes, but own homes and pay taxes and are involved with PTA and give back to their community. Since 2008, we've created a campus environment. We have Louisville Scholar House, Downtown Scholar House, Stoddard Johnston Scholar House just opened this past week, and next is the Parkland Scholar House in the old Maupin School in the West End. Each of these campuses is a community, but they're also part of our larger community. To understand the intention with which we have created the environments to support our pam families, the most important thing I can do is offer you the opportunity to hear from a participant. Elizabeth Scott came to us in 2008 with two children. She graduated with her bachelor's in social work from the University of Louisville Kent School in 2010. She completed her master's degree in 2011. There were four days between graduating with her bachelor's and starting her master's program. She's now a certified social worker for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, proud mother of two children, and a wonderful example of what it means to have a community of support. Support. And so it's my privilege to now turn it over to Elizabeth. Thank you. It's, it's really a, pr a privilege to be here. What I'd like to share with you is a little bit about the environment of where I came from, what it was like with Family Scholar House, and what I'm doing today. Um, my mother was a single, single mother. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I um, wasn't education wasn't talked about in our household. My mother became a lifeguard and was approached by a physician who said, how would you like to work in the health field? After 35 years, she retired, and my father worked for the Ford Company, and he has since retired. So following suit, I became a lifeguard, and I was never approached by a doctor, and I thought, well, I've got to do something different. But then again, again, school was not a priority. I was, um, I was kicked out for the first time when I was 15 years old, some poor decisions, some lack of parenting, and at the age of 17, I was on my own. Um, it was definitely survival mode. I wasn't preparing for a career. I wasn't preparing for college. I was just trying to get day by day. When my life changed was when I had my children. I had my daughter when I was 22, a single mom, not a lot of support, and um, then I had another child, and I thought, my environment is not suitable for children. My, my environment was, was not conducive. My habits aren't worth, worth passing along. And that's where I got the motivation to, I need to do something different. I enrolled in JCTC, which was JCC at the time. And um, I lasted about two semesters. Again, I'm the first in my family. It wasn't part of our culture. Um, just a lot of gaps, resources, support. How do you balance children and school? I didn't even know what I was going for. Um, and I'd actually heard about Family Scholar House shortly after my son was born. And uh, I thought, wow, what a great program. Housing, support. But because of some of the choices that I had made in you know, part of my environment, I really lacked the confidence to believe that somebody like me could benefit from that. I thought it was for somebody else who hadn't walked quite the path that I had. Um, it wasn't until I was getting ready to get my associate's degree. That was my goal. When I enrolled in school, they said, what do you want to do? And I said, two years, I'm defying the odds. I barely graduated high school. And so I, I was getting ready to, to get my, my associate's degree in human services. And my school counselor it was another one of those days. I'm really emotional. I was in tears. And she knew I had bounced around. And you know, like Kathy said, what I learned is friends or family, no matter where you are, you eventually wear your welcome out until you have your own place and you can't be asked to leave. And it wasn't as blatant as get out, you've got to go, but you just kind of pick up on some chaos and hostility, some resentment that these kids are getting on my nerves and 
just different rules. And so um, I contacted, it was Project Women at the, at the time, and I called in tears and told them my story, and um, I became in, involved. What Kathy didn't mention is that, you know, there's a waiting list for Family Scholar House, but it's not a traditional waiting list. Um, and Kathy will say, I'm not looking for the brightest, I'm looking for the most motivated. Well, I was motivated, and I knew I needed to offer a different environment, stability to my children, and I became involved, and um, I was assured that I had a spot, and I was waiting for the new campus, and they said, can you hold out a few more months? And I crossed my fingers, and, um, and I did. It was with the support of Family Scholar House that they said, have you ever considered going for a, for a bachelor's degree? And I said, whoa, University of Louisville, that's an awful big school. You know, I, I, I barely got through high school. But what I learned is that I did well. I did well in, in, in college. Once I found, took one class at a time, I'd never gone full time. Uh, but I had a lot of potential. And I was starting to see that. So with the support of Family Scholar House, I enrolled in school for the first time full time. Um, I was able to do community service. I didn't have a, a job, but I volunteered in the community. Um, for the first time, I was on public assistance. I, I got food stamps and I got welfare. And I say that, that I'm the first in my family to go to college. I'm the first in my family to be on welfare. And so it, it's not all, it comes with a stigma and it took a lot of humility, but I was a part of a community that was like me. Um, I needed that support, I needed resources. I needed a babysitter so I could go to class. And what I loved about Family Scholar House is it is like-minded single parents with a, with a common goal. Um, there wasn't partying next door. There wasn't a lot of, we were focused. And, um, and there was a lot of accountability. Predominantly uh, female residents, not a whole lot's gonna go on that's not gonna be talked about. So there was a lot of support and accountability, which, which was really good because I found in high school, you know, I had friends, I was surrounded by people that were doing exactly what I was doing. It wasn't always the right thing. And it felt so good to be a part of Family Scholar House because it was a part of the right thing. Um, showing my kids, you know, that we have our own place, we're own stable, they had their own bedrooms. And um, one thing that I'm really proud of is that I had an opportunity while I was at the Kent School to study abroad in Uganda, Africa. When the opportunity was presented, a lot of people shook their head and they said, you can't do that. You're a single mom. What about your kids? How can you pay for that? And I went back to my community. I went back to my, to my neighbors and Kathy, and I said, man, there's a really great opportunity, but they don't think I can do it. And my neighbors put their hands on their hips and they said, what do you need? You need child care, I'll help you. You know, we wrote letters, we fundraised, I got scholarships, and I spent eight weeks in Uganda, Africa, working in their social work system. And uh, they said, how can you leave your kids like that? And I said, my kids and I, we're bonded. They know I'm coming home. And the pictures and the stories that I bring back, you can't tell my kids they can't go to Africa. They've seen me do it. You know, you, you can't tell my kids they're not going to college. They've walked me walk, walk across the stage and make grades. Uh, my daughter ran down the aisle into my arms, and she says, Mom, you're a rock star. And that made me feel good. You know, again, being the first in my family, I'm, I'm breaking cycles. I'm changing our culture, not just a, a college-going culture, but a life-learning culture. I did. I got, my, math, I got my, my bachelor's with cum laude honors. Not too bad for barely graduating high school. Four days later, I was in class because I thought, ooh, I can't slow down now because a lot of people are telling me I can't do this. Why are you doing that? So much time. And it was so important to have that community to reinforce them. This is why I'm doing this. I got my master's in May of 2011. This is the shirt my kids made for me. I'm really proud of it. Um, but when my daughter talks, she says, when I go to college, after I go to college, my girlfriends and I are going to have an apartment, and we're going to travel the world. And you can't tell me my daughter doesn't believe that because I've shown her that. I've shown her that it's possible. Anything is possible. Where I'm at today, because one thing that I love about Family Scholar House is, unlike traditional assistance, it is time limited. There's a time to move on, and there's a time to open the door for the next single parent, and, and to be a leader, and to be a mentor, to show them. So I have moved out. I'm renting a home right now, but what I'm most excited about is with Family Scholar House, it truly is the epitome of family. They held my hand through my bachelor's. They held my hand while I got my master's. They've supported me, but I'm also, I'm now I'm in their home ownership program. 
I've been pre-approved. Last weekend I went house hunting, and if you all would send me some, some positive house hunting vibes, tomorrow I'm going house hunting, and I'm going to find my house tomorrow. I'm determined. I've got my eye on a couple, but again, Family Scholar House is supporting me and walking me through that. My, my whole outlook on education has changed. Again, it was day by day, didn't, didn't put a lot of merit into it, but today even being out of school, I stay active, whether it be in a Healing History Academy or Leadership of Louisville. I've taken four certifications for life coaching, for women's empowerment, child parent trainer. I've gone as far as to Mexico City to, per to participate and get involved so that I can give back and encourage women. I've also been blessed so blessed with the opportunity to co-author three books and I've got a fourth in the works. It's, um, it's all self-empowerment. Um, my first chapter, which was published probably about a year ago, it's called uh, the, the, the Power of Education, the front of the class, The Power of Education, because it was for me through my educational journey that raised my standards that he generously bought a copy. Thank you, Hans. <laughs> um, and they are for sale. But, um, <laughs> but my outlook, you know, it's just like I've shown my kids, you, you, can't, you can't tell them anything. They've seen me do it. And I feel equally um, as motivated. Like, I'm not going to stop. I'm not stopping anytime soon because using my journey, and a lot of people kind of feel ashamed and they want to hurry up and move on. But I feel like it's important to tell my story because there's people in similar situations that put, drop their head and they say, for somebody else. I don't deserve this because of the choices that I've made. And that's what my environment told me. Sometimes family is toxic, sometimes friends. And, and you need another community that can see your potential. First thing, when I met Kathy after she got, to know, she got to know me, and she said, I believe in you. And I needed her to believe in me. Today, I believe in me. And it feels so good for her to support whatever I'm getting into, whether it be co-authoring books, whether it be going to, to Mexico City, or, or any opportunities where I can get involved. I'm, a, I'm an investigator on a domestic violence team with the cabinet. I'm a certified social worker. Um, it's the first time I've been full-time employed. It's the first time I've had my own health insurance. It's, it's the first time that I've been really proud of what I'm doing. And it's just getting started. I've completely changed not only my, out, my own outlook, but my children. Again, you can't tell me my children won't go to college. Um, I don't believe that my children will ever be on any type of assistance because we've, we've changed the course. And it all, it's all because we've changed our community. We've changed our culture. You know, I'm the first. My daughter will be the second. And my son will be the third. And they will be homeowners. And, and, and they will be positive. And I, and I also feel confident that my relationship with Family Scholar House will go on as long as they allow me because it is family. And so it is important to, to stay involved, to motivate people because I'll, I'll tell my kids, no matter how far down the wrong path you go, every day is a turning point and you can stop and turn around. And that's what it takes. When you get to Family Scholar House, I mean, you, you kind of wash up broken and bruised and you're at a point you're saying, I'm going to do something different. And, and Family Scholar House works. Education works. And I'm just really proud to be the success story that shows that things, things do turn around. And I'm, I'm glad to be a community member that gives back. So thank you all for coming and really appreciate it.